What's up, everybody? Mark with Cardivox Academy here. And imagine my surprise when I woke up one day and Spirit Box had uploaded like 14 billion videos uh, in a small span of time. Imagine that. And I was like, dang, I got some work to do. Just kidding. We're probably only going to cover one, maybe two of Spirit Box's new releases because we got other stuff to do. Um, but I always like to cover Spirit Box when I can uh, because I really like Courtney's voice. Now, I will say that some of Spirit Box's last stuff hasn't necessarily been to my taste, but I've still enjoyed looking at it because it's fun to watch, you know, where these uh, these bands go and their their journey. Uh, so today we're going to be checking out Too Close, Too Late. I know that there's another song that came out recently that had almost entirely harsh screams. Maybe if we do another Spirit Box video from this set of releases, we'll do that one. Um, this one may have some harsh vocals. This may not. I don't really know, but I'm very excited to check it out. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Mark. I am a metal vocalist in a band called Kardashev. We're on Metal Blade Records, and I'm a full time uh, vocal coach specializing predominantly in harsh vocals. I do give the occasional clean singing lesson here and there, but mostly what I'm interested in and what I enjoy teaching is people how to do stuff like <laughs> stuff like that. That's a lot of fun for me. However, I do a lot of clean singing in Kardashev, clean singing, clean singing in Kardashev, and I love the voice in all of its iterations. Uh, so when I get a chance to break the combo and check out some some singers, I enjoy doing that. Um, if you like the comment, like, share, subscribe, blah, 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 the stuff you all always skip. Listen, I do it too. That's not a jab. We all do it. Let's go ahead. Check, let's check out Spirit Box. Too close. Too late. Here we go. Okay, that's where I'm going to pause it because obviously we're getting to the chorus and I do pause a lot on this channel. Uh, you'll be fine. So a couple things uh, about Courtney's voice that I absolutely love. I've talked about this in pretty much every other video um, that I have. Uh, I have talked about her voice and I think she does an excellent job. I love the characterization she gives to her voice. She does something very, very interesting, right? And I've said this a couple times before and people kind of thought it was a dig. And I just want to clarify, I don't mean this as a dig at all. Um, the melodies that she's been choosing in their, the music recently, and especially in this song, they're very uh, pop influenced, right? Now, I, I love pop music. I think pop music is awesome. Um, I don't like all of it, but I like quite a bit of it. And so one of the nice things about pop music is that it's it's easy to follow, right? And that can be a very usable tool. Like you can kind of, when you're listening to these melodies, you can kind of tell where she's going to resolve. You can tell what note she's going to land on, right? And that's really nice because it really helps me as a listener kind of like sink into the song and ease into the song. Plus juxtaposed with the, the, the instrumentation that they have, especially when they get like really genty, really, really like progressive metal. Um, it's nice. It's nice. It's like you're anchored in like sort of a chaotic storm. And I think that that's a very strong, uh, songwriting tool. And in addition to that, she puts a lot of characterization and expression on her voice. Like she will aspirate certain, certain words. Like, you know, if she's, she's singing, she'll like kind of, uh, 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 breathe out of the word, right? She can sing in the chest very, very comfortable with a light tone that still sounds warm and still has some weight and body to it. And that's really cool. A lot of times as singers, we think of our chest voice as something to to move out of. Like, oh, those are just the basics. I want to sing high notes. I want to sing and mix. And, you know, and that's very cool and that's very valuable. And those are things that we should, you know, we should do if that's what we want. But a good strong command of the chest voice is, is phenomenal. And she's doing it great here. I even love how she kind of sometimes will like scoop up on a note, like a little, like a little mini crescendo halfway through, a little mini crescendo and glissando halfway through. And then she'll honestly like kind of cut the note off. It's like, you know, da 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 da. Da, da, da. And it sounds really, really neat. So there's a lot of good characterization here. There's a lot of good Courtney technique here. And there are a lot of things that I think when you are listening to a spirit box song and you're expecting uh, uh, you're expecting uh, that Courtney sound. This is kind of what I think of. We'll see if she does some screaming here um, and we'll talk about that. But let's let's go ahead and keep going. I 
I really like how she's leaning in and out of her voice just very delicately here. So obviously I don't know this song, um, so I'm not going to sing these melodies, but one thing that I'm hearing is like, like I was talking about initially, right? Her voice is light. Her voice is, is, is a little bit airy. It's very delicate here, but it's still got that body and that weight. And then I think the word was door. She sort of like leaned into the front of her face, leaned into the mask, brought those vocal cords a little bit more close together. And we had a little bit more weight, right? So for example, I could sing, um, I don't know, um, ha, Aladdin. That's always what I do. So I could be here, you know, I can show you the world shining, shimmering, splendid, right? So that's very light. That's very airy, much, much less, you know, dark than her voice. Um, much brighter, I should say, right? And then I could lean into it, right? I can show you the world. Let me scoot, scoot forward. A whole new world, a dazzling place I never knew. Right? Do you hear a whole new world? Right? We can lean into the front of our voice there. And she's doing that. But the interesting thing is there's not like a ton of contrast in that. Um, and I find that fascinating. That's all. So far, I dig this song. I'm glad that they kind of got a little bit more like, you know, down, 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 a little bit more progressive, um, progressive metal, I should say, uh, in this song, because it's perfect. It's perfect what I'm talking about. I, I can like sort of take comfort in her singing and still enjoy the sort of like chaotic uh, sound of metal. So this is very cool. Let's keep going. So there are a couple things I want to talk about here that are actually quite cool. So uh, she did. I think they were dotted, uh, dotted with the dotted quarter notes, dotted something. Um, but she had like this kind of back and forth, like dun, 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 dun in her cadence. And that was cool because it kind of mirrors the more like, again, I don't know the best word for it, but like the progressive. I know Gent's not a genre, but leave me alone. Um, like that genty sort of sound of the instruments. That's really cool. But I want to talk about leaning in and out of her voice. And I want to talk a lot about it a little bit more technically here because um, there's a lot of that going on. So there are two things that often uh, new singers will run into when trying to add um, weight to their voice, right? There are two things that they'll run into. Um, first and foremost, tension in the glottis, right? Tension around the vocal cords. Now, part of this is because a lot of times brand new singers, they their singing voice is just a breathier voice, right? So, you know, I could say like, you know, the ABCs. If I was a brand new singer, it would be very common for me to sing it like, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. And then when we talk to them about bringing those vocal cords together to remove some of that airiness, what they'll do is they'll overcompensate and they'll squeeze in very, very hard versus first kind of just relying on their speaking voice, right? So there are a couple things that we can do to avoid that. First and foremost, you can work with little staccato notes, right? That's a great way to remove airiness. It's not going to like solve your whole thing, but um, it's a great way to work with it. So you can take like um, you can take like um, like a basic scale, and if you're going to go like you know la 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 la, make a staccato la 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 la. La, 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 la. You can do that sort of thing. Um, another thing you can do is you can focus on, um, I can't remember what I have. A, uh, I used to have a name for this. It's not my original exercise. I used to just call it something funny, but I can't remember. But you can do like, so start with like sort of a Fonzie noise and do it like in your, your speaking voice. Now, if you don't know who Fonzie is, he's before my time as well. Uh, but he's a character from a, a show called Happy Days, which is actually an enjoyable watch if you like older TV. Um, but anyways, kind of what he would do is he would walk into a room and he'd be like, hey, hey, you know, that was kind of his catchphrase. So go ahead and do that. You don't have to think about singing. You don't have to do, think about anything like that. Hey, hey, hey. And then what we're going to do, assuming at this point you have a basic understanding of your of your breath support, right? 
we're going to sort of ramp into that, right? So now you're using that voice, hey, and you see somebody, and let's say they um, hit your car with their with their grocery cart. Okay, you might go, hey, 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 buddy, come on, hey, 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 right? So when we do that, hey, 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 we can then, you know, the student has that, hey, 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 hey. Of course, you would be making sure the gloss, the the glottis isn't tightening, the vocal cords aren't getting a bunch of medial tension, pressing, pressing, pressing. They're feeling that buzz in the mask in the front of their face. Their abdominal muscles are gently working down low around the belly button, right? Ribs are staying out. These are all important fundamentals. And then we can start from that breathy space. Hey, 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 and connect as we lean in. That can give you the ability, you know, it takes time, but to take your voice and sing these like, you know, hey, like these, these movements where our voice gets a little heavy, uh, more weighty and more, more light. Anyways, those are some things that, uh, that can be helpful. And if you're not a screamer, but you're a fry scream, or I'm, I'm sorry, you're, if you're not a singer, but you are a fry screamer, these exercises can be very valuable to you as well. Let's keep going. I know where I want to go, but it's too close, and it's too Nice late. chorus effect. Everybody stop talking. I got to hear that again. Holy cow. I hate to say it, that's my favorite part of the song. <laughs> no, 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 no dish at Courtney at all. Her her voice is amazing. I especially love how she lifted, you know, she's been spending the song like leaning into her voice for the big moments to accentuate what the song is doing. Very good interplay. She clearly knows how to supplement a song and to make the song better with the use of her voice by, by that leaning in that we've been talking about. And then she circumvents that and she leads into that section by lifting her voice nice and airy, moving towards her headspace. But God damn so that section for any who may not be familiar with it although i'm sure many of you are was very like black gaze very like like uh, atmospheric black metal not dark like when you hear black metal you honestly you very often think of like sorry i threw my pillow my uh, my little headrest you very often think of like you know satan and like all that stuff and i love that like give me some like satanic black metal uh, and I'm, I'm going to love it. Right. But there's another side of, of black metal, very atmospheric black metal that takes a lot from like post rock that takes a lot from like shoegaze. Right. And it puts all these things together and we get bands. I'm not saying it sounded exactly like this, but it had a vibe of Asteroid. It had a vibe of Alcest. It had a vibe of uh, Lant Loss specifically, uh, or I should say very much so in the uh, melting sun era. And on this channel, we cover a lot of deathcore and death metal, but most of the time I'm listening to that stuff. Um, like nothing beats Lant Loss for me. And I, I, I've never heard Spirit Box sound like this. And I love this. That was beautiful. Um, especially that like that 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 melody that the main guitar did. I, I think it was but but um, I don't remember what it was, but it's this like very like swaying. But um, it resolved that way. Da, 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 da. I think it did that. I don't remember. Um, but just like such iconic, like post black metal 
goodness. Oh my God, that was so cool. We're listening to it one more time. God damn, that was sick. I had, oh, that was so cool. And leading into it with this chorus effect, how cool is that? Because this, like, you do not, you do not hear chorus effects in in these other types of genre, uh, other genres of music that I'm talking about, right? Ve like, I, I, that's so. I feel like that's really creative because, like, again, I haven't heard just uh, Spirit Box's whole discography, so maybe uh, this is a sound they've done many, many times. I don't know, um, but her doing this like chorus anthemic effect into into a genre where you don't normally hear that, but it's still working and still sounding so good. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, mm, that's the ticket. That is the ticket. A great little vocal run. Just fucking, mm. Subverted my expectations entirely because like I said, for the first half of this song, Courtney was kind of playing it close to the chest, pun intended, chest voice, playing it close to the chest, melodies that were beautiful and, 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 and well, well, there's a lot of character in them, but that I could anchor to, right? Then we get this chorus effect into a sound I totally didn't expect. That sound comes back with a little bit more groove to it. And then she ends on this just like interesting like run. What, what, what did she sing there? I didn't go back far enough. <laughs> That's also a very, that's a, that's a very like post black gaze type of sound too. That's a really, that's a really like gazy note progression. I also like that she didn't bring it down because my ear, as I point to my brain, my my mind wants it to go, you know, there was. I want it to resolve, but it doesn't. It hangs there and there's this reverb tail of her voice and then this the the song and mm, very cool. Yeah. I dig it. I dig it a lot. Ooh. 
All right, so uh, YouTube with a stupid yeah, get you know what? No, you know what's so funny? Um, never mind. I'm not going into that. Um, I was gonna complain about YouTube. Nobody's here for that. Um, so first and foremost, if we do another Spirit Box song, I am doing whatever, whatever we were hearing in the outro there because I want to know from an album building perspective, from a tracklist perspective, what they l finished that with. Because the end of that song was immaculate. If you know any, if you've hung out with Cardvox Academy at all, um, on the channel, I mean, um, you know I'm a sucker for outros. Usually my favorite part of a song is gonna be the last third of the song. And I also usually want it to last about five more minutes. Seriously, they could have stayed in that. I'm just gonna call it, I'm just gonna call it like, atmospheric black metal that's not the perfect but the perfect nah let's call it let's let's call it like let's call it post metal let's just call it post metal i know that's not perfect i know the uh, the genre cronies are gonna get mad um i don't know cope but um like i could have had that last five more minutes i uh, just like when it comes to music just put me in the clouds and leave me there like i want an oubliette in the sky that's what i want um now i totally understand keeping songs shorter, keeping them more concise. Um, but when you create something so beautiful, I want more of it. Um, that was beautiful. I love, I love everything she did. You know, at the beginning, I didn't really know where the song was going, but by the end, I don't know. I've never spoken to Courtney before, but I feel like she really listened to that song and she said, okay, how can I really make this song even better than it already, already is? Because there was so much intentional choice there, right? playing things not safe that's not the word i want but um you know what it felt like it felt like at the beginning of the song she was guiding me somewhere right like she was saying like hey i'm going to show you where we're going no surprises i'm going to show you where we're going and i'm going to take you on like this beautiful journey and then it sort of changes and then it sort of changes and then she says like okay you're ready to be on your own and she like just dips me into the sky and i float off into the celestial fields of uh stars and space um Erebos, I, uh, not Erebos, what is it? There's a Lant Lost track, uh, I Gather the Stars or something like that. Point is, this is a great track. I know I'm kind of rambling. I'm gonna go listen to it like five more times because this was sick. Great job to the people in Spirit Box. I feel like, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like, I feel like a, like a, like a, like a uh, dopamine hit. Like I feel like so chill. I, I feel like a, Feel like I hit a joint. Not even gonna lie, I do. Um, that's all I got. I'm just rambling. Great song, uh, and I think part of the reason I'm so excited is because, like I said, I, uh, full support for Spirit Box. Full support for Spirit Box. They were going in a direction that just wasn't my thing, and I was totally cool with that. I was like, listen, I've got all the old stuff. I've got all. I've got everything up to uh, Constance. I'm fine. I'm good. These people should be on their journey and they should do stuff that fulfills them. I'll always support bands doing what fulfills them, right? Hearing this and hearing them go come back a direction that I'm into, I'm like, you know, I'm like, hee hee, yeah. I can't help but be excited about it. So this is really cool stuff. Anyways, I'm just beaming right now. Um, yeah, it's good to hear. It's good to hear good music. Many thanks. Much love. I'm out.